Hi, I'm Dr. Lalita Chandil and this is my channel Blesses. Today, I'm going to start a new series of videos that is Basics of Laboratories, mainly for those who have recently finished their uh, phlebotomy course or a person who has started a uh, laboratory recently. This video would be helpful for you. Basics of Laboratory, today I'm going to talk about sampling tubes. In the sampling tubes, is very important because everybody of you should know in which tube what sample has to be put. Coming to the basics, first, if you see there are so many tube, colored tubes in a laboratory, we need to be very particular in which tube what sample is to be put so that we don't confuse ourselves and that we get the reports properly. So first, after phlebotomy, uh, when a new person or a beginner sees so much of tubes, he's really confused. And if you have really lost touch with the phlebotomy, you would be there differently a confused person. I think this video would help you out to clear all your doubts of sampling. Coming to the first tube, we have the uh, the most common, before going into the tube, the most commonly done tests in the laboratory are for the blood glucose and the CBC. You need to be very clear what tubes have to be, what tubes are used for these tests. Apart from the CBC, that is complete blood count and blood sugar, you have one more thing is the hormones or thyroid test. For this, you need to use the red color tube. Now I'll explain each about each tube and why the additive is used uh, and all I'll be sharing in this video. First, the first thing is the sodium fluoride tube or the gray colored tube. In this tube, there is sodium fluoride, so it prevents glycolysis, that is, there is no breakdown of sugars. When there is no breakdown of sugars, this tube is mainly used for measuring the sugar levels in the blood. So this tube can be used for fasting, PP, and also for the random blood glucose level. Second tube is the clot activator or the serum tube, which we call commonly in our laboratories. This is a red color tube, the most commonly used uh, uh, tube in our laboratory. Here, the serum is separated from the blood, and this uh, this uh, tube uh, sample is mainly used for all the routine biochemical tests like lipid profile, your liver function test, your renal function test. Apart from apart from that, for the hormones like thyroid hormones, estradiol, prolactin, all the hormones we use this. And apart from this, we also have, we also use this for immunology, like senior HIV, HBS, AG, and HCV. Even for serology, we need the serum. For serum, we have to use a red color tube. Next, we have the purple lab, purple or lavender tube, which is also called as EDTA tube. So this EDTA, what it does, it binds the calcium ion in the blood and blocks the coagulation. When coagulation doesn't happen, there is no clotting of blood. So in the EDTA sample, we don't want the blood to be clotted. So this is why we uh, suggest an EDTA tube. This tube blood can be used for complete blood count, for measuring the HbA1c, for peripheral smear, and also for blood grouping. Apart from this, in certain laboratories, they also use for ESR. For ESR, we also have a separate tube that is a black colored tube, which can also be used exclusively for ESR measuring. Now we have the citrate tube. This citrate tube uh, this mainly has sodium citrate. It again, like the EDTA, binds to the calcium. Only thing the difference between using an EDTA and a citrate, putting in simple languages, this is a reversible process. This, in a citrate tube, uh, whatever calcium is binded to the blood, it's reversible by adding calcium. Here also we prevent coagulation and this tube is mainly used for coagulation studies like PTINR and APTT. And now coming to the last tube, uh, which is not very widely used, but you need to have at least one or two stock in your laboratory. That is a heparin tube or the green colored, green color coded tube. It has lithium heparin and here it inactivates the thrombin and the thromboplastin in the blood. And this tube is mainly used for measuring the lithium levels and the ammonia levels. And uh, this is uh, a summary. This slide is mainly a summary of what I have talked I've already said in the beginning of the video that a gray color tube, a lavender tube, and a serum tube is the most important tube you need to have in a laboratory. Apart from that, you need to have the blue color tube and very minimally at least two to three green color tube in your laboratory. This is the sampling tube. And one more thing, one more aspect, important aspect of the sampling tube is the order of draw. Everybody needs to know the order of draw because we have two types of tube uh, in our uh, Indian uh, practice of laboratory medicine. One is a vacuum tube, another is a non-vacuum tube. While using a non-vacuum tube, what happens is there is one contamination of blood from one tube to the other, or there is you know mixture of the additives from one uh, blood to the another. 
to prevent uh, giving a uh, false reports or uh, some negative uh, some uh, abnormal value you need to follow this order of draw in all the laboratory practice so how this is done once you take a blood sample first you put it in the blood culture bottle after that the second one is the sodium citrate the third one is the serum tube or the clot activated tube the fourth one is the heparin tube the fifth one is the edta which you use for complete blood count and the last one is only for the glucose tube or the gray colored tube i think i have given you a good knowledge about the sampling tubes in a laboratory keep watching my channel and subscribe my channel to know more about a uh, laboratory business and how to run a laboratory from the initial days thank you